physics classroom so in today's class we will be learning about lenses in the previous class we learned about reflection refraction total internal reflection about a glass lamp and about a prism right please do watch the videos if you have not done that right so in lenses what is a lens actually it's a term we are all familiar with because we are uh, many of you use spectacles right and in a spectacle there will be a lens there right so a lens is uh, something which is having two refracting surfaces. What I have drawn here is a converging lens or the so-called convex lens. Sometimes we are referred to as also as a biconvex lens. It is known as a converging lens or a convex lens or a biconvex lens. So it has two refracting surfaces, two spherical refracting surfaces. Now, when you talk about a spherical refracting surface, you should know what is the condition there. So, suppose this is a spherical refracting surface and the radius of curvature is R, radius of curvature is R, then we can write N2, this is N2 and this is N1, N2 by V minus N1 by U will be equal to N2 minus N1 by R. N2 by V minus N1 by U is equal to N2 minus N1 by R. Okay, so in case of a lens, <coughs> we are actually having two spherical refracting surfaces. First one, this is the first surface, light will be, if there is an object here, light will be first incident on this surface, and this is curved in this direction, right? So, here we define the first radius of curvature R1. For the first surface, for the first spherical surface, we are defining R1. This point we can call it as the optical center. And this line, as we learned in mirror, it is known as the principal axis. Now, in case of a convex lens, like I already said, I have taught you in the video for reflection, I have taught you the convention also there, okay, in reflection video. So, like I said over there, all the distances measured on the left side taken as negative and on the right side taken as positive. Upwards positive and downwards, it's taken as negative, all right. So, left side is taken as negative and right side is taken as positive. Don't forget that. Okay. So, here I have defined a point O here. What do I call it? Optical center, right? Now, the speciality of those, this point is a ray of light passing through the optical center will pass through without any undergoing any refraction or anything. So, there is no change in the direction of the ray which is going through O. It does not suffer any deviation from the path over there. That is the speciality of the optical center there, right? So now, for the first spherical surface, we have defined this term R1, which is the radius of curvature for the first refracting surface. Now, for the second refracting surface also, we can define our term R2, which is the radius of curvature for the second refracting surface, okay? <coughs> so the first refracting surface is R1, and for the second refracting surface is R2. Now, R1 is on the right side. It should be positive or negative. Tell me. Positive or negative? It should be positive. And R2 should be what? Left side, right? R1 is on the right side. Positive. R2 is on the left side. Means it is negative. Okay. So, here, in order to find out the focal length of a lens, we have a formula. Known as, we have actually two formulas. We have a thin lens formula and we have a lens maker's formula. Okay, now the lens maker's formula is given like this. Based on the lens maker's formula, we can write 1 by f is equal to n2 by n1 minus 1. It is a relative refractive index. Sometimes we can also denote it as mu minus 1 something. Into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. What is r1 and r2? The radius of curvature of the two surfaces. So the focal length is equal to n2 by n1, refractive index, minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. Okay. Now please do remember the thin lens formula also, which is given by 1 by f is equal to 1 by v minus 1 by u. Thin lens formula is what? 1 by v minus 1 by u. Okay. Now, if we know the focal length of a lens, we can also define the so-called power of a lens. 
and the power of a lens is given by power is equal to 1 by f. Now a very important thing you have to remember here is focal length should be written in meters when we are using this condition. Focal length should be written in meters. So the power of a lens is given by 1 by f if the medium is air that is. Suppose the medium is not air. Suppose it's a liquid. So PL will be refractive index of the liquid divided by f in meters. Refractive index of the liquid divided by f in meters or later refractive index. Okay. If the medium is air. We can write this is a condition. If the medium is not air or something else, the power will be NL by f. Clear? Right. So power, please remember, you have to take the value of focal length in meters when you find the answer. And the unit of power is diopter written by D. Unit of power is diopter. All right. Now, now we have the focal length, we have the power. Now, we have to learn about the magnification. Now, magnification of a lens is given by V by U. That is one condition. In mirror, it was minus V by U. Here it is V by U. And this corresponds to the linear magnification or the so-called transverse or, or lateral magnification. Right? This is also equal to F by F plus U or this is equal to F minus V by F. So these are the conditions for linear magnification. This is how you find the linear magnification. You can use also use H I by H L. Okay. Now, in case of longitudinal magnification or axial, longitudinal magnification or axial, m dash is equal to v2 minus v1 by u2 minus u1. Earlier we had a minus n also there, right? Here is v2 minus v1 by u2 minus u1. And if the size of the object is very small means we can use uh, the equation like in the previous case m dash the size of the object is very small m dash will be equal to will be equal to what any of this we can use so f by f plus u the whole square music that's one addition all right so we are learned about linear and the longitudinal magnification and also the aerial magnification aerial magnification area Magnification area, this will be equal to area of the image by the area of the object. And that will be equal to what? M square. Like we learned in the previous case, in case of a mirror. So I think uh, the magnification is clear for you, right? Alright. Now, right now on the screen, you can actually see different figures. The first figure shows you the position of the image in case of a, a convex lens or a converging lens when the object is at infinity. As you can see, when the object is at infinity, we are actually getting an image at the focus on the other side of the mirror. Sorry, on the other side of the lens, right? And in the next case, we can see the uh, representation for an object placed beyond C. So if the object is placed beyond C, where are we obtaining the image? Where are we obtaining the image? We are obtaining the image in between C and F. It's a real inverted image on the other side right real inverted image on the other side between c and f right and the next figure gives you at c what is the condition at c what is happening we are obtaining an image at c again and on the other side of the lens right so uh, i'm not talking about mirrors here i'm talking about lenses here okay and in the next case what is happening if i'm be keeping the object between c and f i'll be obtaining i'll be obtaining our image beyond C there. You can see that, right? And that is the real inverted and enlarged. Now, this next figure, when I'm placing the object at F, what are you getting? When I'm placing the object at F, you are getting an image at infinity. What is the image formed? At infinity. So, remember that for an object coming from infinity, the image is at F. For an object kept at F, the image is at infinity. Okay, now this condition is very important because this will be used again in wave optics. Okay, in Young's double slit experiment and uh, in case of um, dif uh, diffraction and all, it will be used again. Okay, so please remember this. And now, when the object is between F and P, what are we getting? Between F and O, I mean, between F and O, what are we getting? We are getting a virtual and erect image. We are getting a virtual erect 
image okay so this concept is actually used in case of a simple microscope and everything not only a simple microscope in case of a, a compound microscope also this uh, application comes uh, is used over there okay now uh, in case of a concave mirror i mean the concave lens what is happening in case of a concave lens what is happening irrespective of the position where we are keeping it is a it is a virtual image that is formed right respective of the position we are getting a virtual image there so please make a special note of that right so we have learned about i have shown you the image formation for a convex lens and the concave lens also there all right so let's move on to the next point there let's learn about some certain conditions related to a lens okay the first condition is the relation between the speed of the image and the speed of the object okay now suppose an object is moving towards a lens with the speed v o then is found that the image will move with the speed equal to f by f plus u the whole square into v o what is speed of the image f by f plus u the whole square into v o okay so remember that the relation between the velocity of the image and the object is f by f plus u the whole square into v o is equal to the speed of the image okay now moving on to the next condition and that second condition is known as newton's formula newton's formula now suppose we have a convex lens a convex lens like this and there is an object here okay and uh, there is meeting over here okay now let this be the focus here let this be the focus over here okay now normally what will be given to you you will either have the object distance or the image distance something like that right suppose that is not given to you instead you know the distance of the object from the first focal point yeah from the focal point here you know the distance from the of the object and you also know what is the distance of the image from this focal point so if you know the distance of the object from this focal point f and if you know the distance of the image from this focal point f then we can write the focal length f is equal to or actually f square is equal to x1 into x2 based on newton's formula we don't have to go into the derivation or anything of for this just remember this based on newton's formula we can write the focal length square will be equal to x1 into x2 okay so if you know x1 which is the distance between the object and the focus here x2 distance between the image and the focus here then we can write the focal length square is equal to x1 into x2 and that is known as newton's formula okay now suppose we are the next condition is suppose we are immersing a lens in a liquid then we can actually derive a condition like this focal length of the lens by this is the focal length of the lens in liquid focal length of the lens in liquid by focal length of the lens in air will be equal to mu it's liquid taken here right so it will be glass with respect to air minus 1 divided by mu glass with respect to lens minus 1 so the remember this condition please lens when it is placed in a liquid we can write the focal length of the lens uh, lens in the liquid by the focal length of the lens in air is given by refractive index of glass with respect to air minus 1 by refractive index of glass with respect to liquid minus 1 it's actually very simple to remember why right? fl comes over here right mu gl comes here this is remember like that okay now from this condition one thing is very clear this is actually how what magicians use to make something vanish how do they do that let me tell you if density of the glass is greater than the density of the liquid then when we are immersing the glass in the liquid nothing special will happen it will retain the nature the lens will retain its nature and everything nothing special is going to happen there but in the second condition if mu g is equal to mu l this is a vanishing trick this is the condition used by the magicians for the vanishing trick so when you put a lens inside or a glass inside a liquid having the same refractive index as that of the liquid what happens it vanishes right and now the third condition is when when mu g is less than mu l what happens 
When mu g is less than mu l, you know what happens? The nature of the lens reverses air. If initially we were having a convex lens and we just put in the liquid, it now will behave as a concave lens. A convex becomes a concave and a concave becomes a convex. Changes the nature of the lens air. Okay, so remember that when we are immersing a lens or in a liquid, what happens? There is different cases depending on the refractive index of the glass and the liquid. Okay, so please do learn these conditions. It will come in handy for you, right? Okay, now next one, we are moving on to the fourth condition and that is a displacement method. What is that? Displacement method. Now, in displacement method, what we do is, we will have a screen here, we have an object here. Now, the distance between the object and the screen will actually be fixed. Uh, let me call it D. And this D will be greater than 4 times the focal length. Okay. Now, here what we do is, initially, we place the lens at a particular point. And when we place the lens at this point, we will be obtaining an image on the screen, I1. So, initially, we are obtaining an image i1 on the screen all right now what we do is we shift this lens through a distance certain distance x displace it through a distance x so when we displace it through a distance x we obtain another position for the image and that is i2 okay now here the focal length using the displacement method can be written as d square minus x square by 4d what is it d square minus x square by 4d. So the focal length of the lens is equal to what? d square minus x square by 4d. Clear? And also, if you want to find the size of the object, uh, I am denoting it as O. This will be equal to root of i1 into i2. The size of the object will be equal to root of i1, i2. Alright? So using the displacement method again, we can find the focal length. Okay, now let's move on to the next condition. Suppose we are cutting a lens. We have a lens and we are cutting it in two halves. What will happen? So cutting of a lens and then combination of lens. Suppose I'm taking a convex lens and cut, making a cut vertically. What will happen? I'll be getting two planar convex lenses, right? Now, the focal length of each lens each of the planar convex lens can actually be found out by making use of the lens maker's formula. What was the lens maker's formula? What is that? 1 by f is equal to n2 by n1 minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. So using the condition, we will get, get this side, the focal length will be corresponding to, will correspond to 2f. And for this half, again, the focal length will correspond to 2f. Okay. Now, suppose we are cutting this lens horizontally, making a horizontal cut. Then this will be, remain as F and this will also remain as F. Okay. Now, when we combine two or three parts, when we combine two or three parts, two or three lenses, what will happen? Let's see. Now, suppose I am combining one lens and the other lens. It can be combined like this. It can be combined like this. Anyway, it can be no uh, issues in how you are placing it together. All right. So in all the cases, how do you find the focal length? Now the focal length of the combination is given by one by f is equal to one by f one plus one by f two plus etc. Till one by f n. How many lenses are there? Till that we can use the formula. Okay. And since one by f corresponds to the power of the lens, we can write power. This is equal to power is equal to p one plus p2 plus and goes on. Similarly, how do you write the total magnification? That will be equal to m1 into m2 here and if there is one more lens we can write into m3 and goes on. Alright, so we have written the focal length, effective focal length, effective power and also the effective magnification. I hope it is clear. Right. Now, the next condition, suppose two lenses are placed at a distance apart, say d. The two lenses are placed at a certain distance d apart. Then what will be the focal length in this case? In this case, the focal length will be corresponding to 1 by f is equal to 1 by f1. This is having f1 and this is having a focal length f2. Plus 1 by f2 minus d by f1 f2. What is the effective focal length? 
1 by f is equal to 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 minus d by f1 f2. Alright, clear? Right. Now, we are moving on to the last condition, last but not the least. Um, suppose we have another lens and the one side of the lens is silvered. So it is actually a combination of a lens and a mirror arrangement. It's a combination of a lens and a mirror. Okay. For this combination, please remember the standard result for a lens which is silver on one side. This, uh, the equivalent system, the equivalent focal length of the system will be equal to 1 by F mirror. F mirror means what? Focal length of the mirror form. Here it will be concave mirror. Then. Right. So focal length of the mirror minus 2 by F lens. Minus 2 by F lens. Okay, so we remain the basic formula 1 by F system is equal to 1 by F mirror minus 2 by F lens. Clear? So, one side it is silvered and the remaining is a convex lens. And please remember to apply the sign convention you have learned. If it is a convex lens, focal length is positive. Concave means focal length is negative. Remember that also. Alright. Okay. So, I hope it is clear till now. Right? And Suppose we have a convex lens and for this convex lens R1 is equal to R2. Then the effective focal length F will be equal to R divided by 2 into mu minus 1. You can remember this, okay? Mu is a refractive index, N2 by N1, that is our mu. Fine. If it is a concave lens means, then F will be corresponding to, again, the radius of curvature is the same, R1 equal to R2. Minus of R divided by 2 mu minus 1. Fine. Now, if it is a planar convex lens means, the focal length will be r by mu minus 1. Okay. And if it is a planar concave lens means, the focal length will be, will be r by, that is minus r by mu minus 1. Okay. Now, please remember these results also, so that uh, you can actually use it. So, uh, you don't have to apply the equation over and over again, if you remember these conditions. Okay. So we have covered the major portion involved in uh, lenses also there. So we have learned about reflection, refraction, uh, uh, about the glass slab, about the prism, about total internal reflection, about lenses and everything. So I hope this is clear for you. So in case you need uh, any more help regarding ray optics, we will also be uh, doing a person session also, don't worry about it. Uh, so in case you need any more help about or any other topics, please do comment below and uh, please do give us a thumbs up if you like the video. And subscribe to the channel, Basis Physics Classroom. Okay, so until we meet again with optical instruments, thank you.